MCA notified few sections of the Companies Amendment Act 2020 and one section of the Companies Amendment Act 2019. These notifications have come up on 22nd January 2021. To know what all other sections that are being notified, please watch the video till the end and subscribe to my channel if you've not done it yet. came up on the site of MCA on 22nd January 2021 regarding the notification of sections of Companies Amendment Act 2020 and Companies Amendment Act 2019. Now if there are uh, you know the notification is regarding the sections of the same act they would have put it in one notification only but you could see this section came for one notification in one notification and the others were in other notification so what is the difference the difference is that here please carefully see it that in the second line it's written it is the section of companies amendment act 2019 so it is not of the amendment act 2020 it is regarding the section 21 of the company's amendment act 2019 and if you can go you can go and google the company's amendment act 2019 and when you check the section 21 of the said act was regarding the amendment of section 135 that is corporate social responsibility and that has been notified from 22nd January 2021. Take note that that is why this notification was different and in the coming notification lots of sections Another sections have been notified, but they are the sections from Companies Amendment Act 2020. But this is from 2019 and this in this section, if you'll go and Google, you'll see this section 21 of the Companies Amendment Act 2019 is regarding the amendment of the section 135, which is on CSR and that is notified from 22nd January 2021. So the amendment is regarding the section 135. The amendment states that in section 135 subsection 5 where the words are written three immediately preceding financial years alongside that these un all other words have also been inserted that is or where the company has not completed the period of three financial years since its incorporation during such immediately preceding financial years. So these lines have been inserted okay three immediately preceding financial years agar company complete kar chuki hai ya usse zyada hai to jo bhi immediately preceding matlab immediately isse pehle is financial year se pehle teen immediately preceding financial years hai wo ya fir agar teen financial years since its incorporation usne complete hi nahi kiye hain so during such immediately preceding financial years so jitne bhi complete kiye hain usme Right, this means this ki agar teen immediately preceding financial years agar complete kar chuki hai, hai to three consider kiye jayenge. Agar nahi kiye hai, to jitne bhi complete kiye since its incorporation, wo consider kiye jayenge. So these words have been inserted. Point number second states that in the second proviso, after the words that says reasons for not spending the amount occurring at the end, the words, brackets, figures and letters. Now, what all is again inserted after the words reasons for not spending the amount the new words that are being added are and unless the unspent amount relates to any ongoing project referred to in subsection 6 transfer such unspent amount to a fund that is specified in sex schedule 7 within a period of six months of the expiry of the financial year shall be inserted so after the words that says reasons for not spending the amount uske saath ye words add kar diye hain and unless the unspent amount relates to any ongoing project referred in subsection 6 matlab unless wo kisi ongoing project se related amount nahi hai agar wo related nahi hai to use aap transfer kar do kisi bhi fund mein the fund that is specified in schedule 7 you can transfer it to a fund that are being specified in schedule 7 within a period of 6 months of the expiry of the financial year 
Now after subsection 5, the following subsections shall be inserted namely, so subsection 6 states that in case, you know, any amount is unspent, that is regarding an ongoing project, like I told you earlier that unless it's in any kind of ongoing project, you can transfer that amount to a fund that is specified in schedule 7, okay? Here is written that if it is not किसी ongoing project से related नहीं है, तो आप उस unspent amount को किसी fund में transfer कर सकते हैं, जो fund specified है schedule 7 में. Now, what if it is pursuant to any ongoing project? In that case, the act says that such con fulfilling such conditions as may be prescribed undertaken by a company in pursuance of the CSR policy shall be transferred by the company within a period of 30 days from the end of the financial year to a special account, right? You have to transfer that unspent amount within a period of 30 days from the end of the financial year. In a special account, mein aapko wo jo पैसे हैं वो जो फंड है वो अनस्पेंट अमाउंट है वो ट्रांसफर करना है 30 डेज में ट्रांसफर करना है व्हिच इज ओपनड बाय द कंपनी इन दैट बिहाफ फॉर दैट फाइनेंशियल ईयर किसी शेड्यूल्ड बैंक में ये अकाउंट ओपन करना है टू बी कॉल्ड और उसका नाम होगा अनस्पेंट कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पांसिबिलिटी अकाउंट and such amount shall be spent by the company in pursuance of its obligation towards CSR policy within a period of three financial years from the date of transfer, failing which the company shall transfer the same to a fund that is specified in Schedule 7 within a period of 30 days from the date of completion of the third financial year. So in case any amount that is related to the ongoing project. In that case, you have to transfer that unspent amount to a special account in a scheduled bank that will be named, the account will be named as the unspent corporate social responsibility account. And then you will be using that amount towards the obligation for using that CSR policy within a period of three financial years. You will be spending that amount in that case only. After that also, right, failing which, if you don't do that, then again it shall transfer, the company shall transfer the same to a fund specified in schedule 7 within a period of 30 days. Now, subsection 7, after subsection 6, subsection 7 states that if a company contravenes the provisions of subsection 5 or subsection 6, the company shall be punishable. So, if a company contravenes the provisions, or provisions ko follow the provisions, or provisions ko, you know, manti nahi hai, of subsection 5 or subsection 6 which you tell you what unspent CSR amount if you don't follow the follow the company follow the company then they, they are punishable the company as well as every officer of such company so the company is punishable hai, the uh, fine Lagega company pay which shall not be less than 50,000 rupees but which may extend to 25 lakh rupees. Matlab 50,000 se kam nahi hoga, matlab 50,000 se zada hi hoga wo fine or 50,000 se lekar ke maximum 25 lakhs hoga. And every officer who is in default, he or she will be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 years or with fine which shall not be less than 50,000 rupees which may extend to 5 lakh rupees or with both. So in case ki provisions follow nahi hote, to company ki punishment hai jo ki 50,000 se shuru hogi fine jo bhi hai fine 50,000 se kam nahi hona chahiye, 50,000 se zada hi hona chahiye to the extent of 25 lakhs maximum hai. Aur koi officer in default hai, so, uski punishment mein imprisonment hai, jo ki for starting from one term, like minimum punishment ek term ki hai, jo ki zada se zada teen saal tak ki ho sakti hai, for it may extend to three years, ya fir usko fine dena par sakta hai, again jo ki 50,000 se shuru hoga, matlab 50,000 se kam nahi hona chahiye, so minimum amount is 50,000, or wo zada se zada 5 lakh tak ho sakta hai, or with both, matlab ki jail bhi ho sakti hai, or fine bhi ho sakta hai, dono cheeze bhi ho sakti hai, like either of the two bhi ho sakta hai, or dono bhi ho sakta hai, as it is written down, or with both. So, kaafi important hai ye subsection, uh, regarding the punishments I would say. So, moving to subsection 8, it states that the central government may give such general or special directions to a company or class of companies 
as it considers necessary to ensure compliance of provisions of this section and such company or class of companies shall comply with such directions to so central government koi bhi general ya special directions de sakti hai kisi bhi company ko ya class of companies ko ki wo ensure kare ki ye jo provisions hain inko comply kiya jaye so as i told you that on 22nd january there were two notifications that notification was regarding the uh notification of one section that is from companies amendment act 2019 this this is this was the second notification that was regarding the sections that are now being uh you know notified of companies amendment act 2020 kuch din pehle bhi कुछ सेक्शंस नोटिफाई हुए थे तो उस पर भी मैंने वीडियो बनाई है कुछ सेक्शंस जो कि कंपनीज अमेंडमेंट एक्ट 2020 के ही थे वो ऑलरेडी नोटिफाई हो चुके हैं अगर आपको नहीं पता यू कैन सी ऑन द आई बटन अबव या फिर डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में जाओ उसमें वो वीडियो है गो एंड वॉच दैट वीडियो दैट वॉज रिगार्डिंग द सेक्शन दैट वर नोटिफाइड अर्लियर ऑफ द कंपनीज अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड दिस इन दिस नाउ वी विल नो दैट वॉट ऑल सेक्शन हैव नाउ बी नोटिफाइड ऑफ कंपनीज अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो स्टार्टिंग विद द सेक्शन दैट आर बींग नोटिफाइड आर गिवन हेयर अंडर सो जो लेफ्ट साइड पर जो सेक्शन दिए हैं दीज आर द सेक्शन जब आप गूगल करोगे ना द कंपनीज अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो यू विल सी ये जो सेक्शन होते हैं द सेक्शन इन विच वहाँ पे अमेंडमेंट्स दी होती हैं एंड इन्हीं सेक्शन के सामने गिवन होता है कि एक्ट का कौन सा सेक्शन है यू नो अमेंडमेंट ऑफ सो एंड सो सेक्शन सो यू विल गेट दैट क्लैरिटी इफ यू गो देर कि वहाँ पे सेक्शन टू लिखा है तो उसके राइट हैंड साइड या उसके मार्जिन में गिवन होता है अमेंडमेंट ऑफ सेक्शन टू सब सेक्शन फिफ्टी टू तो एक्ट का वो सेक्शन होता है बट उस पर्टिकुलर जो एक्ट का आता है सेक्शन राइट अमेंडमेंट का जो सेक्शन आता है तो वो लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे गिवन है बट इफ यू कंसिडर रिगार्डिंग द कंपनीज एक्ट तो वो राइट हैंड साइड पे गिवन है सो आई टेल यू आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट जस्ट द राइट हैंड साइड क्योंकि वही रेलिवेंट है उन उन सेक्शंस में एज पर द एक्ट अमेंडमेंट आई है दैट इज सेक्शन टू सब सेक्शन फिफ्टी टू सेक्शन सिक्सटी टू Moving further to the to the amendment sections that are section three ninety three four one zero four one eight four three five four four six b four five two and four five four. So the first amendment is in section two subsection fifty two, which states that provided that such class of companies which have listed or intend to list such class of securities as may be provided prescribed in consultation with SEB shall not be considered as. लिस्टेड कंपनी सो द अमेंडमेंट एक्ट नाउ एम्पावर्स की सेंटर के पास अब ये पावर है लाइक इन कंसल्टेशन विद से बी आफ्टर कंसल्टिंग से बी दैट इज सिक्योरिटीज एंड एक्सचेंज बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया दे कैन एक्सक्लूड द कंपनीज इशूइंग स्पेसिफाइड क्लास ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज फ्रॉम द डेफिनेशन ऑफ लिस्टेड कंपनी सो अगर उन्हें लगता है द सेंटर इन कंसल्टेशन विद से बी कि इन कंपनीज को हम एक्सक्लूड कर सकते हैं फ्रॉम द डेफिनेशन ऑफ लिस्टेड कंपनी दे कैन डू दैट एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव बिहाइंड दिस इज टू एक्सक्लूड द कंपनीज दैट लिस्ट देयर डेट सिक्योरिटीज ऑन रिकोगनाइज स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सो एक एम्पावरमेंट है सेंटर के पास कि वो चाहे तो अब कुछ कंपनीज को जिन्हें वो चाहे इन कंसल्टेशन विद से बी लिस्टेड कंपनी की डेफिनेशन से निकाल सकती है so the next amendment is in section 62 which is further issue of share capital in this you can see that in sub six section sub 62 sub section 1 uh, in point number under sub clause a there is uh the point number 1 that states the offer shall be made by notice specifying the number of shares offered and limiting a time not being less than 15 days to isme amendment ye hai ki less than 15 days ki jagah par less than 50 days have been substituted by the words or such lesser number of days as may be prescribed to yahan pe amendment ye hai ki bajaye ki less than 15 days unhone wo cheez hata di hai aur ab likh diya hai or such lesser number of days as may be prescribed jitne bhi kam din wo prescribe karenge right so this is basically the substitution of these words and this is the amendment in section 62 The next amendment is in section 89 which is declaration in respect of beneficial interest in any shares so in this after subsection 10 a new subsection that is subsection 11 is inserted so in the inserted new subsection 
the central government has been given the power to exempt any class or class of persons from complying with any of the requirements of this section except subsection 10. So, section 89 may एक नया क्लॉज ऐड किया गया है एक नया सबसेक्शन ऐड किया गया है आई एम सॉरी एक नया सबसेक्शन दैट इज सबसेक्शन 11 ऐड किया है जिसमें सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के पास पावर है कि वो एग्जाम्प्ट कर सकती है किसी भी क्लास और क्लासेस ऑफ पर्संस को कि वो इन इस सेक्शन की रिक्वायरमेंट्स को कंप्लाई करे उससे वो एग्जाम्प्ट कर सकती है एक्सेप्ट ऑफ द सबसेक्शन 10 सबसेक्शन 10 से नहीं कर सकती बाय अ नोटिफिकेशन इफ इट इज नेसेसरी to grant such exemption in public interest and any such exemption may be granted either unconditionally or subject to such conditions as may be specified in the notifications through a notification central government ye cheez kar sakti hai wo unconditional bhi ho sakta hai ya subject to conditions bhi ho sakta hai exemption jo wo deti hai and uh, basically it should be in public interest only Moving to the next amendment that came in section 117 subsection 3G in resolutions and agreements to be filed. So in subsection 3 in clause G for the second proviso, the following proviso shall be substituted. Now this is basically the substitution of the proviso in which it states that provided further that nothing contained in this clause shall apply in respect of a resolution passed to grant loans or give guarantee or provide security in respect of loans under clause F in the ordinary course of business by a banking company, any class of non-banking financial company or any class of house finance company registered. I will be explaining you what does all this mean. So the explanation is that uh, the act requires the companies to file resolutions with ROC. Take care, ROC ke pass aapko resolutions file karne padni hai. This is the requirement of the act which includes the resolutions of the board of directors of the company to borrow money or grant loans. However, is jagah se, is she se of, you know, if the company to borrow money or grant loans, there are exempt, the banking companies are exempt from filing resolutions passed to grant loans or to provide guarantees or security for a loan. इस सब चीजों से बैंकिंग कंपनीज को एग्जाम्प्ट किया हुआ था अब इस एग्जाम्पन को एक्सटेंड कर दिया है टू रजिस्टर्ड नॉन बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल कंपनीज को एंड द हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज को तो अलॉन्ग साइड बैंकिंग कंपनीज अब जो रजिस्टर्ड नॉन बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल कंपनीज है एंड हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज है उन्हें भी ये रेजोल्यूशन आर के पास फाइल करने की अब जरूरत नहीं है the next is the insertion of a section that is 129A. So according to section 129A, it states that the central government may require such class or classes of unlisted companies as may be prescribed to prepare the financial results of the company on such periodical basis and in such form as may be prescribed to obtain the approval of board of directors and complete audit or limited review of such periodical financial results and to file a copy with the registrar within a period of of 30 days of completion of the relevant period. So the explanation of this section is quite easy as it is very uh, like written very in simple language only. Ki central government they can, they can require any such class or classes of unlisted companies as may be prescribed ki wo financial results of the company on such periodical basis banai and approval lay from the board of directors and complete their audit and then file the copy with the registrar within a period of uh, 30 days of the completion of the relevant period with such fees as may be prescribed. So it is basically... Uh, the central government as they may uh, you know as they may require they can tell any class of understood companies to prepare and obtain the approve to prepare financial results and obtain approval of board of directors and complete the audit or limited review and then file it at a frequency that will be notified later so this provision it will help in improving corporate governance Moving forward to the next amendment that is in section 135 of corporate social responsibility. Now this amendment is regarding the amendment in Companies Amendment Act 2020. So here you can see ki subsection 5 ke baad ek proviso insert kiya gaya hai. Subsection 7 ko totally substitute kiya gaya hai. And subsection 8 ke baad ek aur subsection insert kiya gaya hai. 
The explanation regarding the amendments that has come up in section 135 of CSR is in three important things. That is set off of excess amount which says agar koi amount hai jo spend hui hai do person se zyada hai so that will be allowed to set off such excess amount out of their obligation in the succeeding financial years after complying with the prescribed rules. So, allowed hai aap usse set off kar paoge excess amount ko. Uh, kuch exemptions di hai from forming CSR committee. To isme hai jo bhi constitution of CSR committee hai jo subsection hai wo किन पे एप्लीकेबल नहीं है तो सबसेक्शन 9 जो इंसर्ट किया गया है वो इसीलिए है कि सीएसआर कमेटी जो है जहां पे द अमाउंट रिक्वायर्ड टू स्पेंड ऑन सीएसआर डज नॉट एक्सीड 50 लाख एंड द फंक्शंस ऑफ सीएसआर कमेटी इन सच अ केस मे बी डिस्चार्ज बाय द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स सो इन केस सीएसआर जो अमाउंट स्पेंड की जाती है सीएसआर पे वो 50 लाख से कम है 50 लाख से ज्यादा नहीं है वहां पे सीएसआर कमेटी की जरूरत नहीं है it may be discharged by the board of directors. Penalty for non-compliance hai, agar non-compliance kar rahe ho CSR mein, to penalty fix kari hai. That is, the company shall be liable to a penalty of twice the amount required to be transferred by the committee to the fund. Jo fund mein amount transfer karna hai, uska double penalty lagega. As the case may be, or one crore, whichever is less. So, do cheeze hai, twice the amount hai, jo apko fund mein transfer karna tha, ya fir one crore, dono mein se jo bhi kam hai, and officer and default ke liye hai, penalty of one tenth of the amount required to be transferred to such fund, or two lakhs, whichever is lesser. So, penalty ka one tenth, ya fir two lakhs, whichever is lesser, ye dono ke liye alag alag penalties unho ne prescribe kar di hai. Next amendment is regarding section 379 that is application of act to foreign companies. It's section may subsection 1 may jo proviso hai that shall be omitted. It's clearly written in one line that in section 379 of the principal act in subsection 1 the proviso shall be omitted. Now there is an insertion of a new section that is 393 a, in which the central government by notification can exempt foreign companies, companies incorporated or to be incorporated outside India as may be specified in the notification. So, let me explain you in simple words. The explanation states ki ye jo insert hua hai section that is uh, regarding ki ab central government jo hai kisi bhi notification ke through kisi foreign company ko ya fir companies incorporated or to be incorporated outside India unhe exempt kar sakti hai. Right. Whether the company is established or not or when formed may or may not be established a place of business in India from any provisions of this chapter. This chapter ki provisions say central government kisi foreign company ko ya koi company jo you know incorporated or to be incorporated outside India hai chahe company established hai India mein nahi hai uska jo place of business hai wo hai ya nahi hai that doesn't depend uh, that doesn't uh, you need to be here. Uh, matlab, compulsory nahi hai ki hona chahiye hai ya nahi hai dono pe applicable hai to central government notification de ke unhe exempt kar sakti hai is chapter ke provision se and the notification shall be laid before both houses of the parliament as soon as it is made Moving forward to the amendment in section 410 that is constitution of appellate tribunal. So, in the changes hai, wo hai in the opening portion the words not exceeding 11 shall be omitted and in clause B for the words figure section 53N, 53A shall be substituted. Explanation of this section says that ki central government by notification, jo section ye hai hi, constitute kar sakti hai, appellate tribunal uh, to be known as NCA. LAT that is National Company Law Appellate Tribunal to is make chairperson hota hai a number of such number of judicial and technical members iske baad kuch ye words the not exceeding 11 matlab uska usko restrict kar diya gaya tha ki judicial and technical members jo hain wo 11 hone chahiye usse zyada nahi hone chahiye to ye jo three words hai not exceeding 11 inhe omit kar diya gaya hai so now section would be read as Chairperson and such number of judicial and technical members as the central government may deem fit. Which is a restriction that 11 should be removed from this amendment. And the second amendment is in clause B. May any direction, decision or order referred to in section 53N. Now 53N is in the It is 53A of the Competition Act 2002. Further, 
regarding the amendments a new section has been inserted that is 418a so basically section 418 is regarding staff of tribunal and appellate tribunal तो इसी सेक्शन के अंडर ये फॉलोइंग सेक्शन इंसर्ट किया गया है जिसमें कुछ पावर्स दी गई हैं एपलेट ट्रिब्यूनल को कौन उन्हें एक्सरसाइज कर सकता है और जो बेंचेस हैं वो कहाँ कहाँ पे ऑर्डिनरली दे कैन सेट इन कंसल्टेशन विद द चेयर पर्सन ये जो सेक्शन इंसर्ट हुआ है इसकी सिंपल एक्सप्लेनेशन ये है दैट इट स्टेट्स दैट द पावर्स ऑफ द एपलेट ट्रिब्यूनल मे बी एक्सरसाइज बाय द बेंचेस कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड बाय द चेयरपर्सन तो जो बेंचेस उन्होंने कॉन्स्टिट्यूट किए हैं वो भी एपलेट uh, ट्रिब्यूनल की पावर जो है वो एक्सरसाइज कर सकती है हैविंग एटलीस्ट वन जुडिशियल मेंबर एंड वन टेक्निकल मेंबर तो एक एक ये लोग होने चाहिए एंड द बेंचेज शैल सेट एट न्यू दिल्ली और प्लेसेज एज द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट मे इन कंसल्टेशन विद द chairperson decides in section 435 which is regarding the establishment of special courts few words have been substituted like earlier uh, it was written that the central government may for the purposes of providing speedy trials of offences under this act by notification instead of this now it will be read as offences under this act except under section 452 by notification establish or designate as many special courts as may be necessary तो जहाँ पे पहले लिखा था कि सिर्फ लिखा हुआ था ऑफेंसेस अंडर दिस एक्ट बाय नोटिफिकेशन उन दोनों के बीच में ऑफेंसेस अंडर दिस एक्ट तो है एक्सेप्ट अंडर सेक्शन 452 को एक्सेप्शन में ला दिया गया है बाय नोटिफिकेशन तो ये चेंजेस आए हैं ये सब्सटीट्यूट किया है इस सेक्शन में थ्रू अमेंडमेंट कि एक्सेप्ट सेक्शन फोर बाकी के जो यू नो ऑफेंस जिनके लिए स्पीडी ट्रायल्स चाहिए सो दे कैन एस्टैब्लिश और डेजिग्नेट एज मेनी स्पेशल कोर्ट्स जो उनको चाहिए तो वो डेजिग्नेट कर सकती है सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इन सेक्शन 446 बी दैट इज रिगार्डिंग लेसर पेनल्टीज फॉर वन पर्सन कंपनीज और स्मॉल कंपनीज इसमें 446 सेक्शन को सब्सटीट्यूट किया गया है द फॉलोइंग सेक्शन शैल बी सब्सटीट्यूटेड नेमली बेसिकली पेनल्टी डिसाइड की गई है रिगार्डिंग ओ एंड स्मॉल कंपनी स्टार्टअप कंपनी प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी और उसकी जो ऑफिसर एंड डिफॉल्ट है आई टेल यू इन सिंपल वर्ड्स की क्या पेनल्टी डिसाइड हुई है या क्या पेनल्टी चेंजेस हैं सो द एक्सप्लेनेशन इज दैट द पेनल्टी पेबल फॉर नॉन कंप्लाइंस अगर कोई वन पर्सन कंपनी स्मॉल कंपनी स्टार्टअप कंपनी और प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी या उनका कोई ऑफिसर एंड डिफॉल्ट और एनी अदर पर्सन ही डजन कंप्लाइज विद द प्रोविजन्स राइट right? तो कि, कितनी पेनल्टी उन्हें पेबल है अगर वो कंपनी है तो नॉट मोर देन हाफ ऑफ द पेनल्टी स्पेसिफाइड इन द प्रोविजन प्रोविजन में जितनी भी पेनल्टी दी है तो उसके हाफ से ज्यादा नहीं होनी चाहिए पेनल्टी ठीक है जितनी भी पेनल्टी उसका हाफ ही एक ओपीसी या स्मॉल कंपनी या स्टार्टअप कंपनी या प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी देगी टू अ मैक्सिमम ऑफ टू लैक्स वो भी एक मैक्सिमम अमाउंट की लिमिट है कि दो लाख तक ही होगा उससे ज्यादा नहीं और ऑफिसर एंड डिफॉल्ट की तो डायरेक्टली वन लाख ही है राइट right? so in the next amendment is regarding section 452 that is on penalty for wrongful withholding of property which states that section 452 mein sub section 2 ke under ek proviso insert kiya gaya hai regarding the imprisonment of such officer or employee uh, you know regarding Uh, the amount that is relating to related to his provident fund pension fund gratuity fund i'll explain you in simple words ki what is the proviso or if the proviso is inserted what is it all explaining the explanation of this section is that ki agar court satisfied hai court apni satisfaction kar leta hai ki company ne hi apne officer ya apne employee ko provident fund pension fund gratuity fund ya koi aur fund jo ki welfare of its officers or employees ke liye banaya gaya hai maintained by the company hai pay hi nahi kiya company has not paid all these things to that officer or employee and any kind of compensation or liability for compensation under the workmen's compensation act 1923 in respect of death or disablement wo bhi pay nahi kiya company ne then the imprisonment for wrongful possession or withholding of a dwelling unit cannot be ordered right to uske related agar कोई रॉन्गफुल पोजेशन या विद होल्डिंग ऑफ अ डिंग यूनिट के लिए जेल नहीं भेजा जा सकता इम्प्रिजनमेंट ऑर्डर नहीं की जा सकती ऑफ दैट ऑफिसर और दैट एम्प्लॉय अगर कंपनी ने ही पे नहीं किए ये चीजें 
last amendment is in section 454 that is adjudication of penalties in this section ek subsection 3 ke under ek proviso insert kiya gaya hai and in that it's regarding some non compliance if it is rectified in few days which are being specified then what will happen i'll explain you so the explanation regarding this inserted provision is that ki in case koi non compliance hota hai this default of non compliance under section 92 subsection 4 or section 137 subsection 1 or 2 or is default ko 30 days ke andar andar ya usse pehle hi right prior to the issuance of notice by the adjudicating officer rectify kar diya jata hai matlab theek kar diya jata hai then there should be no penalty and all proceedings shall be deemed concluded to koi penalty nahi lagegi aur ye ek deem kiya jayega ki sari jo proceedings hain wo automatically conclude ho chuki hain thank you so much for watching this video till end subscribe to my channel if you've not done it yet yet help me grow it and share this video as much as you can with your friends with your colleagues and your csc and cma members thank you